Good evening, I'm Jake Lapin for NCC Sports. No November 17th, 2014. That's the last time UConn's women basketball lost. Back then, Steph Curry had yet to win an MVP, US citizens still couldn't travel to Cuba, and this Apple Watch here? Yeah, that didn't exist yet. Vegas gave the Huskies a 70 to one odds to advance to the national title after beating Mississippi State by 60. That's 6-0 the previous year. Let's just say an upset was unlikely. The second seeded Bulldogs do have one advantage though, and that is Dak Prescott cheering them on from the sidelines. We'll take you to the fourth quarter tie game. Morgan William with the step back and the swish. State pulls ahead. And UConn, you know, they don't play in a lot of close games. Down four here till Katie Lou Samuelson hits it from beyond the arc, puts the Huskies back within one. Final seconds of regulation. Tied once again. Here's William denied. UConn with the chance at the buzzer, no. Overtime it is, Dak can't even watch. So let's draw it up again. Final seconds of OT, it's William for the win. Got it, Hail State. History in Dallas, the Bulldogs pull off the dramatic upset. Just absolute chaos, but guess what? They still need to win another game after all of that. They'll take on South Carolina in an all SEC final. A familiar face returned to Georgetown today. Patrick Ewing is heading back to the Hoyas, this time as head coach. Ewing averaged 15 points and nine rebounds for Georgetown in the early 80s. He played 15 years with the Knicks and has spent the past 15 years around the NBA as an assistant coach before landing the head coaching job at his alma mater. And speaking of college coaches, Jim Beheim has finally, finally replaced Mike Hopkins on his staff, that is according to reports. Alan Griffin will supposedly become the next assistant coach at Syracuse. Griffin played at SU from 1997 to 2001 and has spent the last five years on Archie Miller's staff at the University of Dayton. Cardiac Cuse is usually in reference to basketball, but this year, Syracuse lacrosse has taken over the rights. The men's team has now played six straight games decided by one goal and in doing so has climbed up to number four in the rankings. Still in their way, number one Notre Dame. A top five matchup in South Bend doesn't get much better than this. Syracuse off to a solid start. Ben Williams will win the faceoff here. Over to Brendan Bomberry to Nate Solomon, who finishes it off 2-1 to one Syracuse early. Fast forward to the third quarter at SU by three, Sergio Salcido, the no-look pass here, finds Solomon again for another goal, but the fighting Irish would not go away. Right here on a broken play, it's Timmy Phillips over the shoulder goal, ties things up at nine, take a look again. Knotted up, entering the final frame, that's pretty. To the fourth we go. Nick Mariano around the bend, fires and scores. SU back on top. We'll take you to the closing seconds. Orange clinging to a one goal lead. Brandon Gleason, no sir. Evan Malloy makes the game winning save. Watch it again, Gleason, good look. But Malloy denies him one more time right off the cage of Malloy's face guard. Syracuse wins another one goal game. A huge win on the road against the number one team. Well, the Syracuse Crunch were in action tonight, tied with the Toronto in the North Division. They started off the first of a back-to-back -back set against the Marlies in an effort to swing the standings. Slapshot night at the War Memorial, the Crunch honoring the movie's 40th anniversary with some sharp-looking Charlestown Chiefs jerseys. Matt Tarmina, not so sharp there, turns it over, and Brandon Lipsick out in front takes advantage. 2-0 Toronto early on. Second period now, Crunch on the comeback trail. Eric Condra over to Ben Thomas, he likes his goals like he likes his liquor, top shelf. Syracuse narrows the gap back down to one. A few minutes later, Marley's trying to clear the puck. Oops, right to Jonathan Racine who puts it home. That turnover brought to you by Wegmans on the wall there, getting the assist. It's two apiece, we got ourselves a shootout. Seth Griffith for the Marley says, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. Scoots it past Mike McKenna, Toronto takes it three to two. Baseball is back. The New York Yankees started off 2017 with an AL East matchup against Tampa Bay on opening day. The young core with guys like Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge is trying to make a return to the postseason after missing out in 2016. And speaking of Judge, there he is, and court is in session. Top two down three, nothing already. Judge sends this one deep out to left. One hopper off the wall. Starlin Castro comes around to score. Judge has himself an RBI double. Bottom two now, Evan Longoria takes Masahiro Tanaka out of the park, just barely over the fence down the line. Tanaka 
have to hit the showers early. Doesn't escape the third inning, surrendering seven runs. Still in the third, Malik Smith lays down the bunt. Gary Sanchez, yikes. Throws it into right field. Another run comes home for Tampa. Now up seven to two. Top seventh, bases juice. Sanchez, chance at redemption, not quite. Easy ground out. Chris Archer in the Rays. Pick up the win on opening day, seven to three. And there, Dante, is your sports update. Ah, uh, thanks, Jake. So my, I got a question for you. Do the Yankees have any shot at making the playoffs this year? I don't think so. I think they're a solid young team with a promising core for the future, but right now they're just too young. There are a lot of good teams in the American League this year, at least seven or eight, only five get to make the playoffs, so I think the Yankees miss another season. And let's, let's go back to basketball. Do you think that the UConn women losing is a bigger deal or the 73-win Warriors losing in the finals? As crazy as it was to see that Warriors team fall in the finals from a 3-1 lead nonetheless, I think this might have the advantage. UConn had won 111 games in a row, and Mississippi State doesn't have LeBron James. So I'm going to give the edge to Mississippi State instead of Cleveland. Oh, wow. I think I might have to go with the, the Warriors on that one. But when we come back, we'll have LeBar Bowl in the studio, and he'll tell us why Alonzo should go number one. <laughs> 